Greetings and welcome to another Dev Bootstrap screencast. In this screencast, we're going to cover testing our solid application and we're going to be testing the final two classes of our application that is the logger class and the message orchestration class. So the top two classes at the, at the top level of our application stack. Let's take a look at the application right now. So over here, we've got our application and the class that we're going to test is the store logger class. Now, if we look at the store logger, it is a, another class that implements iStore Writer and iStore Reader, these two interfaces up here. So we can see here the iStore Writer info interface implements a save method, and the iStore Reader inter interface implements a read interface, a read method. I should say. And the store logger class expects in its constructor a writer and a reader that also implement the same interfaces, thereby meaning that the uh, class implements a read method and a save method as shown here that both call the underlying reader read and writer save methods as shown on these lines here, line 15 and line 27. And the logger class's job is to log out various messages as and when certain things happen when you call these two methods. So what we want to do in our testing is make sure that when we call these methods read and save, that the various logging activities happen, like reading, did not find, returning, saving, um, error saving, and so on. These things happen as and when they should do when we call these methods. And we can also make sure that the underlying reader and writer methods are called appropriately. So let's get on with this test now. So what we need to do is we go over and look at the iStore logger test and we'll take a look at that. So as you can see in the store logger test file, I am importing an instance of the store logger, or I'm importing the class, I should say, um, from, from here. So I'm essentially loading or importing this file into our test. Then I create a reference to that, that logger here, and I create an instance of the logger right here in our before each block. Notice that I'm also importing the mock store, which is what we used in the last class uh, and in the last testing that we did. And this allows us to basically mock the store that we need to pass in. As you notice here, the constructor expects a, a class that implements the iStore writer and iStore reader interface. And we are essentially defining that here as a, com as a fully mocked object. So when we pass that in to our store logger instance, we get an instance of the store logger thanks to our constructor, and then we can start interacting with it. And what I've done here is I have another um, before each block where I am stubbing out various methods that I know will be called for the iStore reader interface. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to cheat in this video a little bit, and I'm going to copy and paste a lot of the things, a lot of, a lot of the tests, I should say, that I've written for this uh, video. So the first one is when the message is found, we expect the logger to log out certain things and we expect certain methods to call, to be called. And to be honest with you, you can notice that most of the tests in this particular example are about checking that methods have been called. Later on, we're going to check that certain methods return certain things or that certain parameters are passed in. But at the end of the day, if you look at this class, it's mostly using console log, console info, console debug, and so on. So really what we want to check is, is this method called? Because we are not going to check console log. So here, I call logger.read, passing in one, and I expect it to return message. Why do I expect it to return the string me message? Because that's what I've defined here in our mock store, and I've defined the read method to return message all the time, every time. So that's why that will, will return message. And I expect the reader method, reading, sorry, method to have been called with the ID one. Why do I expect that reading method to have been called with ID one? Well, that's the method here. Why is it called with ID one? Well, I've just called the read method here. 
And you can see here the first thing that happens is it calls reading. That's for the logging purposes. Same with returning. And then here I'm checking that the underlying um, reader is actually, re the read method is actually called with the ID expected. So let's run the test, npm test. Try that. Okay. So npm test. And actually what I'm going to do, as I did in the previous videos, is I'm going to use jest watch. But in this case, I ran all the tests. We can see everything's running. So it's a nice sanity check. Again, this is something that is useful uh, to do whenever you clone a new project, update a new branch, pull some changes from a colleague's uh, work. Always run all the tests, just as a sanity check, just to make sure that things are running. So we've run all the tests. All the tests are passing. And now I've set up a watch so that we can see when we change this file. So that is what we're going to do right now, is that we're going to change this file. We're going to add some more tests right here. We're going to add a describe block for when the message is not found. And in this case, I override the mock, the read method, with a uh, mocked method that returns undefined. Why do I do that? Because in our read method right here, I say that if the underlying reader returns undefined, then we want to log that out using our did not find method. So here in the test, I mock this so that it returns undefined. So I'm guaranteed that it's going to return undefined. And then I can call the logger read method passing in an ID 1, and I expect it to be undefined. Notice that even though I pass in ID 1, uh, which could have returned uh, a message like it does in the previous test, now it returns undefined because we've mocked it with this method here. And I expect still the, the read method to be called with ID 1. That's this method here. And we know that's being called because it's returning undefined. So that's, that's good, and that's what we expect. And finally, I'm checking that did not find is called right with the ID, uh, so that we know that the specific logging that we expect to, be, to, to happen is actually happening. OK, now I'm going to add another describe block. And this is the describe block here, which is for the iStore writer interface. OK, and what am I doing here is basically I am in my before each block just for this particular describe is I'm um, I'm, I'm uh, uh, mocking out these these methods here, saving, saved, and error saving with these uh, uh, functions, which don't do anything. They're just basically jest, special jest uh, stubs that we can use uh, on, our, on our instances uh, so that we can then do things like has been called and this kind of stuff. So it helps us to test our application if we want to do this type of testing where we're testing that methods have been called. And I'm then saying, well, when a message is written successfully to wherever it's going to be written, remember, we don't care about the implementation of the store that is passed in, the, the store that implements iStore um, writer in this case, because we, we don't care at this point. We're only testing the logger. And, um, and as I said in previous videos, well, we've already tested the other underlying class. So the cache and the file store have already been tested. So really, at this level, what we want to make sure is that the method was called, like here, with the correct parameters. So what I'm doing is I'm saying, OK, call save on the logger, passing in the ID 1 and the message, a new message to save. And with that, we expect that the underlying, the underlying writer save method is called with the same parameters. So if we take a look at the implementation of the save method over here in our actual class, you can see that when we call it, it does indeed call the underlying writer save method. So we expect that to be called with one and MSG. And then we expect the logger saving method to have been called with one and the logger saved method to, be, to have been called with one because it's called here, saving, and saved is called here. And if we save this file, because we're using um, jest watch, we should see those tests run and we can see them pass. And as you can see here, the iStore writer all passes. And the other part of the iStore writer that we've, we've uh, tested here is that when the class throws an error. So in our particular implementation, 
uh, what happens is, is that uh, there could be uh, there could be an error thrown, uh, and so it says logs logged logged an error. So what we're doing here, this is an interesting example actually, is that we are again mocking the save method, but in this case, we are always going to throw this error here. So that means that when that save method is called, that's the save method here, the the underlying writer save method that's passed into this class, when that is called, it will throw that error, which will trigger this catch block here, which will then ensure that the error saving method is called. And this is what we are testing. We're testing that after we call this save method, we're expecting it to fail. And sure enough, we're expecting it to fail with an error and the test test at uh, the text test and that the logging error saving or the loggers error saving method is called with the ID. That's this method here over on line 29 of the class. So we know that all works because we just we just saved that and that's all, all, all doing all doing very well. The last part of the uh, class that we want to test here is well it's pretty much everything else. And so I'm just going to drop this all in here and go through this one at a time. So here we see I've got described save. It uh, logs a save method to uh, the console via console info. So when we call logger.saved with ID1, we expect console.info to have been called with save me message number one. And we can see that uh, we actually have a f uh, problem here and this is okay this is something to do with just the expected and the received uh, value I've got a full stop here so reading message one doesn't have a full stop if we remove that then we get all the test passing so essentially all of these tests that I just dropped in here are pretty much all the same. They're all just calling the various methods of the of the logger class, reading, did not find, message, missing from cache, returning, and so on. All of those uh, methods are basically these methods at the bottom here, which just in turn just call console debug, console error, console info, console log, and so on. And these are all sort of tested in exactly the same way. So that's, uh, that's how we test uh, that uh, particular um, Example. So let's um, let's just test everything again. Let's run all the tests to make sure that everything is good. Okay, we can press Q to break out of that. Now I can um, uh, create another uh, file, which is going to be for our um, message store uh, test TypeScript. That's right there, and this is going to be real quick. I'm just going to copy and paste this in 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 here so you can see it and quickly it's the same type of thing we got the message store and by the way let's have a look at the message store over here the actual class this is it here if you recall from the solid videos it's very straightforward it just has the constructor which takes the iStore writer and iStore reader and checks they're not null and just sets them to internal properties of the class the save method literally just delegates that method to the underlying writer, and the read method does the same. So this method, or this, sorry, this class really doesn't have much functionality, which is why the tests are very simple and straightforward. And we're just testing the condition that it should throw an error if we pass in null parameters. So we're checking here that the message store, if you pass in a null to either one of the reader or the writers, we get the appropriate error thrown, and otherwise, if we're all good, when we call the read method, it should call the underlying store read and the underlying store save when we call save. And that's it. So if we save that file away, then we can run npm test and we should see everything um, passing. And that basically will conclude this screencast on testing our application. So hopefully that was something useful, something interesting for you, how we basically are able to set up Jest for testing TypeScript applications. You'll notice that the actual tests themselves are written in TypeScript. Go back to the first video where we set this up to see how we set that up, what dependencies we needed to add, and so on and so forth. Hopefully this showed you some uh, interesting uh, ideas and, and tricks about Jest, in particular, stubbing and mocking methods so that we can make 
use of our tests. And also, I hope it, that it showed how that when we refactor applications using solid and, and therefore using um, uh, uh, open close principle and dependency inversion principles and using um, interfaces and and uh, all the good stuff of solid uh, actually ends up producing an application that is easy to understand and easy to test and with that that concludes this screencast series I hope you enjoyed it stay tuned for more videos on uh, software development technology, particularly with blockchain and Ethereum and smart contracts. And in this channel, we try to help you make you become a superb expert full stack blockchain developer. So stay tuned for more of these videos and uh, there'll be more stuff coming up soon related to that. In the meantime, please take care, please like, please share, please subscribe, and I hope to see you soon. Thank you very much, everyone. Bye-bye.